Okay, so now we're going to talk about that spray refinement. One thing I just realized is we weren't using the spray material. Fortunately, they were duplicates of each other, so it didn't really matter. But it should be set up that way. Also, also, for the record, we will end up having the bubbles be incorporated into the ocean splash here. That's the only place that the bubbles are going to show up. So it doesn't need its own render layer. Let's just take the forced phantom. So not only is the phantom going to be the volume below the surface, it's also going to be, I'm going to control click bubbles here, it's going to be the volume and the bubbles. So I get that out of the way. And so now the spray. So copy the foam here, and this will be a separate layer. So we'll say mantra spray. Spray will, of course, point to our render spray. There you go, like so. So now to actually set this up. Let's go to our colliders thing to start. We're going to run a particle sim based off of the spray particles coming out of the whitewater. And I want them to collide with the general ocean, meaning you know, this down here. The particles are going to be spawned around where this fan this kind of stuff is. I want the particles to collide with the ocean and disappear, but I don't want them to be preemptively colliding with this uh, liquid spray here and disappear. So all that is to say, um, let's make a rough approximation of just the ocean layer. To do that, let's drop a grid down. Let's find the maximum size that the grid even gets to. So go to the last frame, that's where it will be the biggest. I'm gonna go to manual mode here, or maybe it won't. Let's just go to, keep it in auto. Wait a moment for this ocean source to do its thing. But what I wanna do is I wanna take at least the bounds of it on the last frame. So 40 by 80 in the X and Z. So copy that here, 40 by 80, and zero by 45 here for the center. And we don't want to move it up five, we just want it to be there. So you can see, as I switch back and forth, it's just the grid there. Now, on the first frame, we still have, uh, there. it used to occupy that other area. So if I have the boat on here, here we go, and I'll do show all objects, let's have the grid come all the way to there. So we can see this is about 100 by 35, just to make it nice even numbers. Let's take those numbers and kind of put them down here. So 100 rows because of this, and 40 columns because of this. And maybe we'll double it. I just want to have some nice squares. So there you go. So we have just a very coarse grid that represents the whole thing. And remember when we were doing the, the ocean displacement in our whitewater area over here? Let's just copy that and move it here. So now we have it. We just have a very rough approximation of the ocean. This is where the particles will collide with so they can die easily. We'll do a uh, extrude volume here just to make it be a volumetric surface. This doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be the same depth you know, the, the magic number we came up with a five before. This is just going to be a collider. And let's take our usual collision setup, move it here, merge the boat in. So take the result of our extrude volume, get the boat too, and that can be our, our source here. Looks like it's mad that there's no normals on it. I don't think it really matters, but I'm going to put, I'll put normals on it anyway. There we go. More importantly, we have now a volumetric representation of the boat plus a rough approximation of the ocean. So I'm going to call this poly all. I'm going to call this uh, all, all. Good. 